The Premier League's newest club haven't played in English football's top flight for three decades. Their home is a stadium that holds just 10,000 people and which is partly accessible through a back garden. They will also shortly become the first club to reach the Premier League from non-league football. And when they do, they'll field a player who has represented them in all five of the top divisions. But who are Luton Town? On the last week of May, after a gruelling 120 minutes and a penalty shootout, Luton won promotion to the Premier League via the Championship playoffs. It was an achievement all the more remarkable after their captain, Tom Lockyer, collapsed early in the first half and had to watch the end of the game from a hospital bed, surrounded by his family. It was an extraordinary day, but only the last part of an amazing and improbable journey. Luton were relegated from the old First Division in 1992, the summer before the Premier League and its soon-to-be lucrative broadcasting contract began. Two more relegations would follow during the next decade and, while the club had climbed back as far as the Championship in the newly structured league by 2005, two straight relegations between 2006 and 2008 left Luton in League Two and in deep peril. Ahead of that 2008-09 season, still beset by financial difficulties and punished for breaching league rules governing clubs in administration, Luton actually began the campaign with a 30-point deduction. Unsurprisingly, they would finish last, 92nd out of all 92 professional clubs in the football leagues, a reality which saw them relegated into what was then known as the Conference Premier Division, the fifth tier of English football. Luton would languish there for five years until eventually they were promoted back into League Two in 2014. Amazingly, in the nine years that followed, culminating in the Wembley win in May 2023, they would scale the entire football pyramid. They were promoted from League Two in 2018, League One in 2019, and while they were eliminated in the Championship playoffs in 2022, at the second time of asking in 2023, they completed their journey back to the top. During this period, and since 1905, Luton's home has been Kenilworth Road, which holds 10,356 fans when full and will soon become the smallest ground to ever stage a Premier League match. 30 miles northwest of London, Luton is home to around a quarter of a million people and its football stadium is tucked between rows of terraced houses. The entrance to part of the ground, the Oak Road Stand, is actually between some of those terraced houses and the route into the stadium even passes over local residents' gardens. In the wake of promotion and in accordance with Premier League rules around stadium facilities, Kenilworth Road will undergo a £10 million renovation over the summer. Its press and broadcasting facilities will be expanded and the strength of its floodlights will have to be improved. But even with these changes, Kenilworth Road will remain more or less the same ground that hosted National League football a decade ago. I think it'll be an asset to the Premier League, says the club's chief executive Gary Sweet. This is proper, real life, real football. This isn't a sterile bowl of a stadium. If you can't embrace it, you don't love football. Sweet has a long history with Luton. He's a fan and was a founding member of the Supporters Trust that forced John Gurney, a hugely unpopular former owner, to relinquish the club in 2003. After the collapse of broadcaster ITV Digital, Luton were burdened by heavy debts and were acquired by Gurney's consortium for just £4. Gurney had ideas. He wanted to change the club's name to match the local airport. He wanted to merge with Wimbledon before they left for Milton Keynes. He also wanted a new stadium surrounded by a Formula One track and for supporters to vote on their next head coach in a phone-in poll. Gurney lasted 55 days before being outmaneuvered and ousted by the trust. Today it owns a shareholding, but the club is controlled by a consortium of supporters that was originally led by Sweet. So Luton are stable after decades of chaos, but their spending has hardly been extravagant. In fact, the context of their promotion is the frugality with which it's been achieved. Only three times in the club's history have they spent more than £1 million on a player. Luton's transfer record also stands at just under £2 million, and that was set last summer and spent on Barnsley's Carlton Morris, who was town's top scorer in the championship in the promotion season. According to figures from Transfermarkt.com, Luton's net spend for last season was only just over £1 million, which was the 11th highest in the division. The two teams that were promoted with them, Burnley and Sheffield United, had net spends of £37 million and £3.9 million respectively. And importantly, both have squad values far in excess of what Luton head coach Rob Edwards had at his disposal. Edwards didn't even start the season as Luton head coach. Nathan Jones, in his second spell at the club, left to become manager of Southampton in November 2022, and the Hatters appointed Edwards to replace him. As a quirk of fate, he'd been sacked by Watford, a near rival to the south, in September. And yet, while his big spending old club cycled through another two coaches before finishing the season in a highly disappointing 11th place, Edwards immediately took Luton up. 
The squad that won promotion still describes the journey that Edwards' inherited players have been on. Luke Berry, Dan Potts and James Shea were all involved at Wembley and all part of the squad that won promotion from League Two. Pele, Ruddock and Panzu joined the club in 2014 while they were still in the conference premier. When he takes to the pitch next season, the 29-year-old midfielder will have represented the club in all five of England's top divisions and will become the first player to achieve that feat with the same club. Whether they survive in the Premier League, Luton's achievement in simply getting there is unlikely to be matched for a very long time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.